Hi, my name is Jack Schreiber and I'm an archaeologist for the Jamestown Rediscovery Project. Today I'm standing next to the North Church Tower Test Unit, which we opened up a little over a month ago. Often we're asked why we choose to dig in specific locations, and although there are a couple different techniques, in this case we're expanding on previous archaeological finds. And welcome to our next episode of Dig Deeper. Hi everyone, my name is Caitlin Delmas. I'm a staff archaeologist here at Jamestown and I am standing right next to our North Tower excavations. And this excavation site is not only just north of the tower, uh, it is also just outside the 1607 Palisade, which would come through roughly right about here, which means most of our excavation is going to be just outside that 1607 Palisade. At the end of the field school in 2016, they uh, uncovered a pit feature, which you can see here is this dark semicircular stain in the soil. And we are really interested in this because there are a few types of artifacts in here that we're really interested in and are going to help date this deposit of artifacts. So the first type of artifact that we're interested in is brigandine armor. Brigandine armor consists of overlapping rectangular iron plates riveted to fabric. This is similar to jacka plate, which is primarily worn by soldiers, whereas brigandine armor is worn by all social classes. Both of these styles of armor would have added protection from arrows as compared to the single plate armor, which we also see here at Jamestown. However, none of these types of armor is well suited for the hot Virginia climate, nor the style of conflict that the English are seeing from the Virginia Indians. As a result, most of this armor is either reworked or thrown away or deposited early in Jamestown history. Not only did we find brigandine armor, which we associate with military uh, activities, uh, we also found other military uh, artifacts in here. The other type of artifact that we're really interested in uncovering more of and that is also going to help date this deposit is Virginia Indian ceramics. And we typically see these type of ceramics early on at Jamestown in higher concentrations because there are more peaceful interactions between English and the Virginia Indians. Uh, we know that when the English arrive here, because of their previous experience uh, with Native Americans, uh, they know the types of goods uh, that are going to be beneficial for trade. So they arrive here with things like beads and copper to trade for food. And a lot of those food items that the Virginia Indians would have been trading are going to come in ceramic vessels, which is playing in part as to why we see uh, so many of these uh, Virginia Indian ceramics in early context here at Jamestown. So now that Caitlin's shown us what's inside our layers of soil, let's take a look at our soil profile here. Soil profiles are really interesting because they give us a preview of what we're about to dig, sort of like a road map for archaeologists. So in the soil profile, we can see these little bits of metal sticking out right here. Given how close they are to this pit feature, they're most likely more brigandine armor, as Caitlin was saying. So we can expect to find more of that as we dig. So over here, we have another feature. Uh, you can tell because of the clay modeling, which is a result of topsoil and clay subsoil being mixed together when the feature is filled in. Also in our soil profile, we have these bricks right here. They could be related to a historic pathway that goes around the church. They could also be related to debris from church construction, and we'll talk about that more in a minute. So to better understand the bricks that we found outside in our test unit, let's think about the churches on Jamestown Island. Right now we're in the 1907 Memorial Church, but a few churches have stood on these foundations, including the 1617 Church. 
That timber frame structure rests on top of cobblestone foundation with one course of bricks on top. Uh, after about 20 years though, that structure needed to be updated. So the colonists decided around 1639 to start a new project. That structure was a brick church built right outside of the foundations of the 1617 church. So we're back outside in our test unit. As you can see, the layer that we're currently digging through has a lot of rubble in it. Some of that rubble is made up of limestone, like this Bermuda limestone here, which first arrives around 1610. We also have other components, like this work stone here, which uh, looks very similar to a millstone that was found in the 1617 church foundations. So if our interpretation of these rubble components is correct, and they are in fact related to the foundations of the 1617 church, then they may have been uh, placed here as a result of the construction of the 1680s brick church tower behind me. Uh, if that interpretation is correct, then the layers below this are also intact historic layers, which is very exciting for us since much of the soil around Jamestown Island has been redeposited. So to find out what we learn, check back for future videos. And thanks for watching.